seven years of age. When I was a choir boy, age of nine, maybe ten, maybe it was eleven, uh, I went to. There was only two sessions in St Gerald Novena, seven o'clock in the morning and half seven at night time. My sister and myself went over to seven. I was the only person in the choir with the organist, and I was singing as much as I could because there's no amplification, and I was told more volume part. That was my first feeling of the Novena, St. Gerard Novena. Then it was when my voice broke and I was off the choir, I became a church collector, a collector. I was walking away from home when I was over 21 and I got an injury to my knee and I had to come home. The doctor said I'd be off work for two months or something and I came home. Home for three weeks, knee was getting better. Uh, I was unemployed now at this time. I, I, I came to the Vena every night. I'd be shoring and collecting and everything else with it. My brother, who was in charge of collector, one of the evening sessions said, Pat, it was the it was the feast day. Take two benches up to the St. Alphonsus altar and put people sitting on them. When I was passing St. Gerald's shrine, this shrine, I turned around and I said, damn all you're doing for me. I went up and put the, the two benches down, came back down and my brother Jerry met me. The man wants to see you outside. He said he'd see you in the yard when the devotions was over. So I went out to the yard and there was hundreds of people coming out of the church. And then this man comes over and he said to me, I see you, at, my wife sees you seven mass in the morning and I see you at night time and the devotion half seven. Are you not walking? I said, no, tell them my story. He said, well, you come up to me tomorrow at half past 11 and see what I can do for you. I went up the following day and he said, there's a job for you here. Uh, you can start now. And I said, no, can I wait till tomorrow morning? He said, fine, come back up tomorrow morning, start at eight o'clock, if you're starting. So I went home and told my mother, you know, mother at that time, oh, that's great, she'll be at home, and I'll be not away. Anyway, from that job, I got special training, and any job I left after, I kept thinking, uh, what I said to you, St. Gerard, damn all, you're doing for me but I knew you were doing for me, because success follow success. In our family, they were very, all St. Gerard was mother and father, two brothers and three sisters, all St. Gerard's people. St. Gerard meant an awful lot to me. Give me an example. I married my wife, Frances, and she became a redemptive woman too. We had only one child, Peter was his name, and Peter was working away in Scotland and England at the time, and he came home and told us uh, that they were getting married. On the 8th, 12th of October, and I said, Peter, I won't be there. What do you mean you won't be there at my wedding? And then Francis joined in, Novena, St. Gerard Novena. So he had to change his date. <laughs> it's everything that I, I'm doing with the Redemptress all my life. And there's one thing about the Redemptress, a very kind, a very understanding. But the greatest thing they have is, they never forget the individual. They never forget the individual.